So 10,000 steps per day seems to be the generally marketed amount of exercise that we should be doing. But is it actually enough? Let's find out. Hey guys, Khalid here. Welcome back to Clinical Physio. So 10,000 steps a day, it sounds like a lot, right? But is it actually enough for us to make significant improvements to our health and for our future. So as a result, I've brought you a systematic review from Palu Chetal 2022, published in The Lancet, a very prestigious medical journal, where they set out to see if there was actually any evidence base for this 10,000 steps a day idea. So the main headline that they found, and I'll read it to you, is... There was a progressively decreasing risk of mortality amongst adults aged 60 and older with increasing number of steps per day until 6,000 to 8,000 steps and amongst adults younger than 60 years until 8,000 to 10,000 steps per day, suggesting that those are the levels of steps that we should be doing in order to improve our health. So it seems like there might be some basis to this 10,000 steps a day idea in order to reduce our risk of mortality. However, there is a component that they wanted to explore more in the review that they didn't quite get the results to, and that is the step rate or the intensity of our steps. But hey, don't worry, I conducted a little experiment of my own. So how fast we walk will naturally create a difference in how hard our body works. And one of the key principles of exercising is that to be able to make physical changes, we have to stress our body enough for it to have to adapt and therefore improve ourselves for the better. Simple example, let's take weightlifting. If I was practicing bicep curls and I lifted one kilo, 10 repetitions three times a day every day, that's a very easy weight for me. Is my body going to adapt and that I build bigger muscles? Probably not. However, if I was starting to lift 15 to 20 kilos, 10 reps, three sets every day, now we're talking, this would be difficult for me. And naturally as a result, my muscles have to build better to be able to cope with that stress. So I simply mimicked this idea with my steps experiment using just my fitness app on my iPhone. So I walked 10,000 steps on two different days. On the first day, I walked 10,276 steps, but at a much slower pace. And I only burnt 257 calories. On a different day, I walked 10,134 steps and burnt 422 calories because I walked a lot faster. That was a 64% increase in the amount of calories I walked. So you can see one way in which I walked was pretty slow and probably not enough to stress my body to make cardiovascular improvements. Whereas the other, I had to work a lot harder and therefore I probably did work hard enough in order to make improvements. So therefore, speed might matter. So what can we take away from this? Well, if my patients come and talk to me and say that they're trying to improve their health and they're going to be walking 10,000 steps a day, first of all, I congratulate them on the fact that they're doing something positive to help themselves. However, I throw that extra thought in there that speed might be a prevalent factor and that if they want to make significant improvements in their cardiovascular health, they might have to walk faster in order to stress their body enough to make those physical changes. However, there is one extra really important component to it and I often talk to patients about strength training too. We know that sarcopenia, a condition where muscles lose mass quicker if we don't do resisted training through our lives, is really, really important. Sarcopenia can lead to things like increased risk of falls, reduced mobility, and therefore further risk factors to our health, as demonstrated by Cruz Gentoft and Sayer from 2019, linked to that article in the description below. So if my patients do want to walk 10,000 steps, I say, great, let's see if we can walk that quickly. But also, have you thought about doing some simple strength training too? So what if your patients are walking less than 10,000 steps a day? Well, of course we can approach this in a couple of ways. First of all, we can try and encourage them to walk further in order to improve their health. But it could be that actually 2,000 steps is quite a lot for them. It is quite a difficult task. And therefore, we need to remember this, facilitate and therefore support them 
on a program to be able to reach a higher number of steps if they want to. Always think with positivity. If people are really trying hard to improve themselves, we should be the ones to help them, not put them down. So guys, I really hope you enjoyed this one. If you have, please support us by smashing that like button and subscribe to our channel for all our latest updates. Furthermore, we've got great resources for physios on our Instagram account, at Clinical Physio, and on our website, clinicalphysio.com. I'm Khalid, see you really soon, here on Clinical Physio.